this is for time. This is always the hardest part for me to get started. Um, me, I like to fly under the radar. I remember when at work, when uh, it, thanks, Brian. I hope I don't cry today. But I remember when it, they were giving me my 20 year uh, anniversary uh, award, I, I walked into, it was all managers and directors and, you know, a few of the other folks like myself. And um, when they got to my turn, um, you know, they had the overhead up there with the, uh, and it said, did you know? And the first thing that I saw was a picture of our church building. And I thought I was going to die. <laughs> I was out of the bag. <laughs> because it's, you know, for me, it's easy just to, uh, you know, let somebody else uh, preach or whatever. And me personally, I, I personally believe that, you know, preaching will come to an end and we'll just praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. So I do come here often, not as often as mom would like, but, and I pray to God that one of the fences, never mind, we won't even go there. For those that do know me, most of you have heard my stories. Not that I tell a lot of stories, but uh, you'll have to listen to them again for the folks that don't really know me. But in reality, I, when I got married, my parents moved out. <laughs> and they came to Massachusetts, and I lived in the house for five years. And, uh, and we live in a little town called Port Huron. The one thing I like about that is you always know where we live, Michigan. We live in an area called the Thumb area. And... Uh, I, and to make it even smaller, our church is in a township called Kimball Township in a little town called Wadhams, which guaranteed not even the people that live around there know where it's at. Wow. But that's where we're at. And we have a little church, not many people, but that's all right with me because I know that's where the Lord wants us. I started to tell you the other day how we got in the building and, and we were in the house and the whole works and then we went and that's another story. But I, I was in a mode where like I heard the Lord say, okay, I want you to move out of the house. Um, so I, I was sitting in my car and we had, matter of fact, Nikita and Stephen were at our house, weren't you? We drove by the building and uh, I got the number and I remember I was sitting at the store the next day and I said to myself, oh, I should call that guy. And then I said, nah, forget it. And I heard the Lord say to me, I opened a way, now walk in it. Yeah. Here it is. And it was a brand new building. There, matter of fact, there wasn't even cement on the floor. And uh, the guy came and, I mean, he did everything for us. We did nothing. All we had to do was move our chairs in and, you know, blah, 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 blah. But that's where we're at, amen? That's where God has us. And I really believe this, that God has put us there. It, you know, I always think about Joseph. I, I can relate to Joseph. You know, he was put down in a prison cell against his own will. Brian. 
maybe we better go eat than come back. <laughs> That's the problem. <laughs> but God puts you in places... You know, because he has a purpose. (laughs) Give me a minute. I sure didn't plan this. funny, I always tell people they need to suck it up. <laughs> but anyway, that's where we're at. I, I, I've, I've already lost thought of what I was going to say. <laughs> Glory to God. But anyway, that's where we're at. We're in that little town. God, God definitely is in control. God is he's doing what he's doing. And, you know, God doesn't always act the way you think he's going to act. And he doesn't always do what you think he's going to do. And, you know, and... Uh, I, I do know this, it's, it, it's far greater than anything that we've ever thought, we've ever asked, and, you know, it, it, it's, it definitely is, is bigger than that. Glory to God. When mom and dad told me that they wanted me to come and share at the conference, I was like, you know, I I don't personally like to get out of my comfort zone. You know, I like to, you know, people think I have OCD, but I don't. I just like to be organized, you know. (laughs) You know, we come to the 21st century and, you know, what I used to call a lazy person, now they say that you have OCD, and it's like, you know, anyway. See, now, I'm all messed up today because now I have to go on the offense instead of the defense. <laughs> you know, it's funny. You know, I don't know, but I'm just saying this. The other day when we were at church and the kids, my, my kids are all in the band and stuff. You know, my mom always says, yeah, us kids, we never, we, we, we never uh, had a musical desire or anything like that. Well, whatever, you know. I don't know. I like sports. My youngest brother, Stephen, he likes sports. You know, the other two, they were weird. They like to go camping and out in the woods. <laughs> And my sister, we used to put her up on the swimming pool when she was like three years old. We'd flip her off and, you know, we did all kinds of crazy things like that. But I was just standing at church the other day, you know, while they were practicing and I was like this because I always like back and left handed. I really did this. I really did. And Corey saw me, my son-in-law, and he started laughing. And so then they started saying, Dad, you can't hit left handed. And I said, yeah, I can't. I said, I actually taught myself how to bat left-handed when I was in Little League. And the first time I ever batted, I hit the ball off the fence in center field. I really did. And so now I have to go on the offense because I've been on the defense for so long. For surely, says the Lord. (laughs) Surely says God, my son, 
Thou shalt be a voice in my kingdom and in my day. Thank you, Jesus. For surely I am moving you from the past and moving you into the future, saith God. And surely I shall make thee known, for thou hast hid long enough. I knew I should have stayed on. <laughs> this is not church as usual. <laughs> Scoot over a little bit so I can lay my Bible down. When he mentioned Joseph a while ago, I, I thought I'd just look at it. And I picked up the Bible, and guess where it fell open to? Yeah. <laughs> Psalms 105. And I'm going to read it to you, and I want you to believe this is real, boy. <laughs> this is a new day for you. I remember you just rolling out in the grass all dirty and nasty and <laughs> 40 years ago. They lived in a little old bitty house and had one bathroom. And you got to know Sister Friend and Sister Honey to get in the bathroom. And the rest of us had to go out behind a barn or somewhere, find us a tin can or do something. Remember them days? Of course, Jennifer wasn't big enough then to give us much trouble. And he sent a man before them, Joseph, who was sold as a slave. They hurt his feet with fetters. And he was laid in arms until the time. This is your time. This is all of our times. I felt it last night. Went home and sat down and take my boots off and began to prophesy. This is a new day, folks. Yes. It's not only just Dale, but it's for all of us. All of us. <laughs> Until the time that his word came to pass, and the word of the Lord tested him. <laughs> I can't hardly read it. <laughs> and the king sent <laughs> and released him. The ruler of the people, let him go free. We're free this morning, church. Yes. God's heard our cry. God's seen our bonds. This is a new day. I know it is. Yes. <laughs> and he made him lord over his house and ruler over all of his possessions. <laughs> Whatever he is today, we are. Whatever he has, we have. Yes. We've been set free. Yes. Going to be a change. This, this, this year is going to change. <sighs> Made him ruler over all of his possessions to bind his prisons at his pleasure and teach the elders wisdom. Israel also came out of Egypt. Yes. <laughs> and Jacob dwelt in the land of Ham. Verse 24, he increased his people greatly, and he made him stronger than all of your enemies. I want you to stretch your hand towards me and Dale this morning. We've both been through hell, <laughs> but I'm telling you, God is going to make us ruler over all of our yes. enemies this morning. <laughs> Father, we need you. We know yes. this is God. Thank you for bringing us through. Thank you for making us <laughs> in authority over all that you yes. have. Yes. God bless you, buddy. Yes. <laughs> yes. When my mom and dad wanted me to come and I asked 
you know, I, like I say, I hemmed and hawed and, and uh, you know, I hemmed and hawed, but the reality is I know down deep inside what's going to happen. <laughs> and my father, I, I called him and I asked him because I knew he would have some kind of theme and I'm not a theme preacher. I, I, it's, it's a struggle for me sometimes to stay in a box. Not saying anything negative about that, but I'm just saying that's who I am. You know, I haven't, I've only been invited to one other convention, and that was 13 years ago, and that's when you invited me. It's okay. It never bothered me. 13 years ago, May. Oh, no. Takes, I'm sorry, nine years ago, May. It was 13 years ago they were here. We came and looked at this church, and Brother Varner was at the other church, and he prophesied and said he was the fourth priest, and he declared about us going out of Grace Emmanuel, which we already knew because we'd already discussed. I don't have time to go through all that. Most of you know the story. And I, I listened to Doc. He, he said he's at least 40 years. And, you know, I, I, you know, for most folks, when they hear the message of life and they hear the message of not dying and, it's new to them, but I've not known anything different <laughs> from day one. When I was five years old, we started going to Grace Emanuel, six, 70 miles away, we drove to church to hear the word of life. And when Brother Chuck's dad, who was our pastor, Died in 1977, I rode my bicycle up and down the street, and I thought the world came to an end. But I didn't stop believing. I didn't lose faith. Nineteen ninety eight you came to my house in November and I was ornery. Anybody ever been there? And they thought they would surprise me and they showed up. Parked the car around the corner, remember? I never forgot what you said. Sometimes God gives us trials. Stronger. <laughs> he doesn't punish you. He's only trying to make you stronger. Because you never know what lies ahead. Sorry. <laughs> when Cindy died, and, and, and my parents will tell you, I don't talk about it very much.
I was staring out the window, and my dad said to me, Son, you can't do this on your own. Remember? He said, I know how you are. You'll try. And I remember one time my mom told me that Pastor Chuck had called her and said, I always call him, but he never answers his phone. And she said, don't feel bad. He doesn't answer it for us either. Because it came to a point that no person no one could help me. Only the Lord. No phone calls. I heard the Lord say to me, we weren't wastelands. Yes. We were habitations. And in 06, I came here. I surprised my mom and dad. We flew in, remember? And David Huskins was here. If I would have thought ahead of time, I would have never came because I figure, it, for those of you that don't know me, every, I just said this to Nikita the other night. Every time I turn around, it was someone was always, I, I mean, I, I remember one time when Paul Friend came to our church. I didn't know the guy from anything. And I was hiding in the back. Remember that? You weren't there, but I remember. He, he said to me, what's your name? I said, Dale Frazier. He goes, do you know Fran Frazier? And I'm like, yeah. That's what my dad wanted to call me. He told that to my oldest son, and my oldest son just doesn't let it go. I know, I love my mom. And he prophesied to me. He said he didn't want to. And he said, you probably don't even want me to. And I said, you're right. And yeah. See, because when, whenever, you know, I, I, I don't mean to be mean or negative or anything like that. I, I, I'm just telling you my heart in this aspect that I, I grew up with an understanding and a belief that I don't, you know, don't take this wrong, but I, I, I don't need somebody to prophesy to me. I, I really don't. Yeah, that's all it does. It just, for, for me, primarily, it's, now I'm not saying that God can't give me direction and all those kinds of things, because he does. I, you know, from people, I, I, mean, I mean, I get more sometimes from people just talking to them, and I can hear God talk. I really do. And I remember I left the convention and, or, yeah, I left and I, I uh, you know, I got the little thing and I listened to it like a million times. And, and I remember I had another CD from him and, and, and I, I'll tell you the truth, for over a year, I still don't remember one message I preached. And those that know me, I don't forget anything. I mean, I remember everything. I seriously can tell you things when I was two years old. I remember. Right, Mom? Now, if you were expecting, he said it was new. <laughs> I, I told you, I always would rather just stay here. Where's Brother Bud's chair? <laughs> I remember I, my dad never asked me to preach or anything for a little while when we came here. And, you know, it was. And I had to be a catcher's mitt because a lot of people would say a lot of stuff and they're just trying to be nice or whatever. And sometimes they said some mean things. I never knew how I felt. 
Not that I go by feelings. But it still hurt. But I was sitting in the parking lot at work at lunchtime, and I was listening to this CD by David Huskins, and yeah. I can't even remember everything he was saying because I, I like to listen to CDs, and you know I don't, you know I don't care if I preach someone's message or not; it doesn't matter to me because it's from the Lord anyway. But um, he said something about Joseph and how the Egyptians wouldn't eat with a shepherd, and it was an abomination. And, all those things, and he, he said something about, he used the word occupation, and I, I remember I went and looked, and when Jonah went in the boat, and the boat was getting crazy, and they said, whose fault is this? And they said, it was Jonah's. And they asked Jonah, they said, what is your occupation? Remember, I came here and preached it. And he said, I'm a Hebrew. And I preached, shared, believed, lived that the only job I have is to cross over. Because that's what Hebrew means. And from that moment on, God began to move me in a little different direction than where I'd been in the last two years. I never quit. I never stopped believing. I still don't. I mean, people would, seriously, before my wife went through all that, I used to have at work when I worked in Detroit that unbelievers would start to hear that I believe that you would never die and they would come and ask me. And the believers would tell the other believers, if you just stay away from Dale Frazier, you'll be all right. I don't have a lot of friends, but that never bothered me. It really didn't. As long as I had my wife and my children, I was happy. I mean, we lived so far from church. We used to have to come down on the weekends. and Like, uh, we had good friends with Nelson and Naomi. And uh, their son, Clark, used to come to our house all the time. And, you know, we had to make an effort. You know, you had to make an effort. But then they, you know, Nelson and Naomi moved. And uh, Jim and Luann, who was really good friends with ours, they moved. And, you know, everybody was moving away. Everything was changing. Life was changing. But as long as I had my wife and my four children, I was okay. I knew how to be self-sufficient. Now, some people might take this the wrong way. I hope you really don't, you know, because I really do love people. I really do. Even though my mother and father told somebody that, yeah, he's no pastor. He'd just rather preach. Shoot my gun and run. I think I heard a preacher say one time. I brought three pages of notes. I probably should have realized when I used the one printer and it was all faded. I said, Dad, there's no ink in this thing. What's the problem? He said, well, use that one over there. So I didn't want to waste paper, so I... And the unfortunate thing is, at my age, now I need, well, I need more than readers now. So maybe it's a new day, and that's one fence that's coming down. <laughs> well, I never stopped believing. And to tell the truth that you know, I never thought it was going to happen. No. Never. Seriously, I was just as sad about losing her as God didn't intervene because I knew my God. 
Now, I never told anybody this story that I know of, but I remember just a few days before it happened, I stood in the shower and I could look out the window and I said, Lord, I have felt just about every human emotion that is possible and I heard this as clear as could be, except death. It's true, I heard it. I couldn't make it up. You can say it was the enemy and you could say it was not the enemy. It doesn't matter what it was. I still heard it. And I really believed. I mean, I believed when I saw doubt in other people's faces. I believed. I believed. So I had to readjust a little bit. Yeah. All right? Okay, God. This obviously was out of my control. I really don't think that you were punishing me because why punish me this way? God doesn't work like that. I seriously did this in 2002. We used to have these quarterly meetings, and Brother Rodney Fontaine was here, and we were at Brother Johnny Leitner's church in Bay City, Michigan. And I called and asked if I could share because the Lord had laid something on my heart. And I remember God telling me, or me telling God, that he was so great that even if he allowed my heart to be ripped out, he would still raise me up. And I just had bought my daughter, Rebecca, a silver trumpet. Had no problem getting it because we bought it on eBay brand new from somewhere in Australia. But Danielle wanted a brand new clarinet. And they were a whole lot more money. And every time I would bid on one, it seemed like I was going to get it. And then I'd lose the bid. And I kept saying to the Lord, how come I can't win the bid? And he said, it's not that you can't win the bid. You're not willing to pay the price. Uh A woodwind, a spirit-filled man must pay the price. So the next one that came up, I didn't care what the price was, I bought it. My brother said this morning about budget, I have never, ever in my entire life lived with a budget. Never. I never will. (laughs) You remember when you got me the hotel, Cindy and I the hotel so we could stay for the weekend? at the Holiday Inn, and they took up a collection the day before. But the day before that, I was getting off the ramp going to work, and the Lord said, I want you to give $100 tomorrow. I said, well, okay. So my sane reasoning when I got home, I said, or before I got home, I said, I got to go home. I'll tell Cindy this is what we're going to do. We never had an issue with money. I mean, it it was never an issue with us. So then I forgot. So the next day, I was right in the exact same location. See, that's one of the things about having a memory sometimes. I can remember every single thing. I can tell you dates. I can tell you where I was. It's, it's, it's kind of sick sometimes. But I was exiting the ramp off of 696 in our area onto a Van Dyke. And I said, oh, man. I, I, actually, I heard the Lord first say again, I want you to give $100. I said, oh, I forgot to go home and talk to Cindy about that. And he said, I never told you to talk to Cindy about it. I told you to give $100. Woo. True story. So we got to this church, and they told us that, hey, they got us this hotel. Brother Frank uh, Urbani came and gave me it. And, and then they said, we also took up a collection and gave you some spending money. I said, really? 
So I opened the envelope up and I counted it and I think it was like $125. Money to mount doesn't mean a thing. Immediately I heard the Lord say, you can't outgive me. So I've had a contest with him ever since. And I keep losing. I wanted to share about God created the let me just read it. I'm not going to preach it. But he, it says in Genesis 1-2, it says, And the earth was out without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And the waters, you know, it, it, it says, figuratively, it's juice. By euphemism, it's urine or semen. Uh, I'm, I'm be careful what I, how I'm saying this, but the reality is, is God wanted to produce something. Yes, he did. And if we go down a little further, we find out that he wanted, let us make man in our image and likeness. And Father God in his greatness reached down and caressed Mother Earth and he pulled out a man. And then out of the middle of that man, he pulled out a woman. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and God actually called Adam the Son of God. Yes, you sure did. <laughs> and this is the one thing that I really believe that a lot of folks just don't really understand. That is, even if Adam would have never fallen, Christ was still coming. There would have been no need for the redemptive part of the plan any longer, but it would have been a fulfillment yeah. of bringing you and I into the likeness and image of who He is. Yes, sir. I, I, I've, I've said this here, and you know, I... I believe every single thing that everybody preached so far, I, I, I really am, you know, I, I'm a life preacher. I mean, I've been around Doc and, uh, you know, it, it started with Brother Sexton, right? And all the preachers that we, all the pastors we've had there. And I, it's the only thing I know. Yeah. Two weeks before Cindy died, I, I was cleaning the jacuzzi in, in the bathroom and, and I, I said, Lord, when no one else believed, I believed. Yeah. Yeah. I believe. No one else might be believing, but I believe. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Still believe. I refuse to not believe. No. I never told anybody this, but I literally saw her land in the casket before it ever happened. Right. Prophets ruin surprises. And Brother Varner stood right there and he prophesied to her and he said, I see you dancing with the king like Cinderella. And I'd already seen a picture of her like Cinderella. But he said, the only thing I don't see is your feet touching the ground. Oh, I didn't want to, I, I didn't want to believe it. And when he was in the other church and he prophesied to her, I said, what in the world is he saying? And I've come to this realization that even if I believe in life, God's bigger. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. His purpose goes beyond our faith. That's a try. God is bigger. Now, some people might say this is the deep end of the pool. I don't really, well, now I swim in pools. That my daughter got a swimming pool, has a house with a swimming pool. But we always go to the lake, and Lake Huron, for most folks, looks like the ocean. So we're in the deep part of the lake. And if you can't swim and you start to drown, maybe a mermaid will get you.
I really wanted to preach in Judges about Samson. Samson has a bad rep, and I'm going to spend the next several months clearing his name. Yes, sir. <laughs> he really does. He really has a bad rap. Yeah. But the Lord spoke to me recently and began to show me this, that most folks look at what he uh, did or what he was like or whatever. They do it from an Ecclesiastes point of view of looking at it from under the sun. Unlike Paul, who at midday, where's the sun at midday? Right in its right place. The sun never moves, but the earth has to adjust to where the sun is. And all of a sudden, the sun and the earth lined up, and Paul came to a moment that he said, At midday, I saw a light from heaven that was above the sun. And all of a sudden, I realized we have a choice. To live under the sun or above the sun. I started to say earlier, a lot of folks, you know, you know, thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And I'm not belittling, but I'll tell you what, I'm not looking for a better car. Better house. I really want to know what it's like to be talking to a eunuch, and the next thing I know, I'm somewhere else. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Now, I know, we're in a deep part of the lake. Yeah, that's good. You understand what you but if I don't believe, How can I, somebody don't believe. and I, I'm going to tell you what, go ahead and believe in life and see someone you love with all your heart. I believe I love Cindy with all my heart. Oh, my no, no man ever loved a woman like I did. Yeah, I mean, Nobody. <laughs> It, it, it's basically ruined me. But I believe from the moment God ever put her with me. I, I'm not a firm believer that God puts every marriage together and all those kinds of things. And, but God has sovereign moments yeah. that show up in our life. I never got mad. I never got angry. No. Not one time. I guarded myself. Yeah. I refused to be mad at God. No way. You know what I learned? It took more power to stay on the cross than to get off of it. If you be the Son of God, get down from here. It took more power to stay right where the Father wanted him than what everybody else was saying. I wish for the visitors you could really have heard a good message. I seriously was going, I was going to the junior college, which, you know, I, I, I can't really say I flunked out of college because you have to have your heart in it to flunk out of it. And the amazing thing about the Lord is I actually work as an engineer at General Motors, and I'm the only one who doesn't have a degree. And I remember... And oh, by the way, this is a freebie, but my boss, we all just got some raises and the boss just gave me the biggest raise out of the whole crew. It's not that big a deal to me because I literally told my boss that I'd give him back every penny if I could have my wife back. I'd live poor. But I remember when Brother Walter Mensch, was, I was talking to him one time and going, and he, you know, he was an engineer and everything. I, I wasn't trying, you know, I know sometimes I was always, you know, seemed to be lippy or whatever. But the reality was, I really believe this. I told him I went to the school of Joseph. I really did. Because that was what was in my heart. 
that God was bringing me away that wasn't ordinary for everybody else. Now, you might say, well, do you think you're a Joseph? Well, in principle, in type, we all are. I hope I'm not boring anybody. You remember when I was here, what I preached about? A false balance is an abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. God's looking for a people who will climb to the top of the ladder because that's where he's at. I laid my head on a rock for a pillow, and I had a dream. Jacob saw angels. I saw myself. Ascending and descending. I didn't. You drew it the other day. We start in God, we end in God. We ascend, we descend. We do what, it's a great circle in God. And I'm not blowing smoke, but I've seen myself in the volume of the book. But I'm not alone. It's the only thing that ever gets me through, Doc. Is you have to know that God is God and He never abandons you. Never. 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 You know, it's like going to church and you sing a song. God is good all the time. And He is. He never changes. Your circumstances do not dictate how God is. The only thing that has to change is the way I think about it. Now, I'm not saying that I didn't think God was good. But I was starting to believe that He was sleeping on the job. But then I realized the job's not over. Right? It's not over. When Samson went down to Timnah, he saw himself a Philistine woman. Truth of the matter is, the first time I ever heard anyone preach this was my dad, and he said this about me and Cindy. Remember? Because his mom and daddy just didn't understand. Can't you marry one of these that go to our church? (laughs) Right? But then it says, but they knew not it was of the Lord. Because mom and daddy were looking under the sun. But Samson, Samson already was looking above the sun. If you go to the last verse in chapter 13, it says God began to move Samson. The word move there actually means he began to tap on his shoulder. Now, you can take this if you want, or you can just throw it off to the side. But I believe if God began to move him and he had a purpose, Samson knew that he was going down to marry a Philistine woman, even though it was going to break the law, because God had a greater purpose. Now, if you've got rebellion in your heart and you think you're going to work things out, well, that's a whole other story. I I always like to throw this in as a disclaimer. Uh, God is not mocked. Do not be deceived. He's not mocked. So whatsoever a man soweth, so shall he reap. If you sow 
to the flesh, you're going to reap corruption. But if you sow to the Spirit, you're going to reap everlasting life. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I was watching TV the other day, and I saw this commercial for some new TV show. And maybe you saw the commercial. Maybe you saw the show. I don't know. I was kind of not really watching it. And there was a man on there, and he began to talk about, oh, somehow I knocked this off. Somehow he began to talk about, uh, he, he, was, he was talking about uh, uh, some guy that he, I guess he's good all the time, and, or he's good a lot of times, he's bad a lot of times, but he made a profound statement, I thought, and it was this, how do you know which guy's going to win? That's what he said. He said, that it, the guy that's going to win is the one that you feed the most. We can either feed on the things under the sun and the soul man will grow to a large entity and be strong, but the end result of that man is still death. Here, fix this for me. But if you feed the new man, The reason most of us aren't hungry for the things of God is we feed our souls with junk food of entertainment. Samson went down to Timnah. The word Timnah there actually means a portion assigned. God has an assignment. For every one of us. He was to marry the Philistine woman because the Philistines, the flesh, had dominion over Israel. And God knew that the only way to break the bonds of that strength was to scheme a plan that no one could imagine. I want to tell you, when, Philistine, when, when Samson married the Philistine, it was like when Jesus came down to you and I as a Philistine woman. Uncircumcised, dead in our trespasses and sin, and instead of destroying or violating the law, he fulfilled it and made us all circumcised. Yes. He brought us into his realm. He married us. You know, people don't like it. What happened to the, you know, with Samson and, and, and the whole works there. And, you know, in the, in the, and I haven't got this far yet, and so I don't, you know. Truth of the matter is they thought he was a whoremonger. And let me tell you something. If Jesus decides to stop in any church he wants and have a good time, that's his choice. Because he stopped in your life. Amen. I told you I'm trying to clear his name. I don't know how many years ago it was exactly. But I remember being in Grace Emmanuel and the Lord said to me, the seed never dies. The seed never dies. It can't die. It cannot die. I can cover it up with all kinds of stuff, but it can't die. And one day when my girls were playing their musical instruments in church, I looked at them, and they were no longer little girls, if you know what I mean. And I said, my God, that seed started growing without me doing a thing. I didn't have to do anything. I, 
I'm not going off the deep end here or anything, but I'm going to tell you what. God has put us in a place that his seed will not return to him void. And it'll grow exactly in to its design intent. You know, working in a test facility, I heard him say Genesis 3, it says the serpent was more subtle than all the other beasts that God made. And I believe this with all my heart, that God designed a test to see if the product would work. And when the product didn't work in that dimension, God designed another test, Matthew chapter 4, where it says that Jesus was led of the Spirit to be tested or tried by the devil. And the reason was the product. No warranty on this product. It was made right the first time. No recalls. And if that same spirit be in you, I, I, I don't want to, you know, simplify this too much. I, I get wore out sometimes. You know, uh, I, I, I like to study and I, I like to read and I like to hear new things and I, I like to all. But you know, under the sun, there's no end to making books, and much study is a weariness of my flesh. God is shooting us into a new orbit that we have never been before. Doc needed his boots. I needed my tie. God's had a purpose from the beginning. God will fulfill His purpose. You're going to have to hear my heart. But He's brought me into a place of whether I live or die. It makes no difference to what He's doing. Do you believe in life? Absolutely. Do you believe there's a generation that will... You know, it's funny. Paul said, we... Can I, can I read something? I, I, you know, I, I put five stones in my bag this morning. I didn't know if I was going to use them all. And I know we'll quote things out of other books and stuff, and I know this isn't really in the Bible. But this really helped me when Cindy died. And it was out of the book of wisdom in chapter 3. Now you can say, well, that's not in the Bible. I'm not reading it. Well, you know what? I said some things that aren't in the Bible today. So, you know. Come on. But the souls of the just are in the hand of God. Did you hear that? And the torment of death shall not touch them. In the sight of the unwise, they seem to die. I remember one thing that David Huskin said was that when church folks die, they're really just sleeping, and there's folks in the church that are still dead.
Here's what's above the sun today, Ron. My flesh won't even like it. I mean, I heard enough messages in my lifetime that when I went home, I had to say, God, let's work this out. Do you know what one of the hardest messages that I ever heard someone preach that I absolutely did not like? That she could not be your wife in the resurrection. I'm not talking about in the last nine years. This was like 15 or 20 years ago. Because I really believed that we'd just walk into it. And them sad, you see. They were sad, you see. Didn't understand. And the reason they didn't understand is because they did not believe in the Spirit. Jesus told them in one sentence, or one, one, one of the Gospels, He says, you err in the Scripture. You err in the Scripture. You think you know. But you really don't know. And he said, haven't you ever read, he is not the God of the dead, but he's the God of the living. Now I heard Brother Justin say to Brother Doc last night about Brother Varner's voice, GC. Now I listen to Brother Varner just about every day. And it makes me cry. Come on. To think yep, yep, yep. that he's not here. He died too quick. I bought him out every day. Yeah. But you know what, Tim? This thing's bigger than what I can see. I got to get up above the sun. This is more than just, you know, some, you know what? Right here in this church. In 2004, the Lord said this to me. The reason people like the life message is because they want to make the kingdom carnal. They don't want to die. It's no different than the unbeliever who doesn't want to die. I never said a word. That wouldn't have been nice. He wasn't talking just to this church. (laughs) Oh, no, no, no. This was a universal word. And I believe in life. But there is a way that seems right unto man. Do you know in the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, as long as we keep eating from the good part, we're okay. Uh Uh-uh, no, we'll die. Just as bad, isn't it? We figure if we can eliminate all the stress, all the negative, all the problems, then we will live. You know what? Psychology won't fix me. I am a mess. I'm so messed up, I couldn't eat last night. I'll tell you how messed up I am. I went home, we were driving home, and Brother Doc and Mom and Dad, they were talking, and they were saying, oh, what a message, what a message. Oh, 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 oh. And then Doc says, I sure wouldn't want to have to preach after him. I knew you did, because I was kind of quiet. And my mom gets a little upset when I get quiet, because she always tells me, boy, when you're on the phone, you can talk. She goes, maybe I need to stick a phone in your ear. Glory. And I went to bed, and I couldn't sleep. My body was tired. My mind was tired. Now, I, I mean, but I know I, I was still awake at 1 o'clock. And I got up at five. I didn't even eat breakfast today. Do you know why? I don't know why. I was thinking maybe you could tell me. (laughs) 
Because my outer man was just not hungry. I, I didn't know what was going to happen today. I still don't know what's going to happen I today. I don't know either, but it was sure good. I better finish reading this. In the sight of the unwise, they seemed to die, and their departure was taken for misery. And they're going from us for utter destruction, but they are in peace. So it says. It doesn't help the soul, man. And though in the sight of men they suffered torment, their hope is full of immortality. Woo! This isn't a surprise in a Cracker Jack box. No, sir. Do you know something? I don't care how bad you want something, that doesn't mean you're going to get it. Afflicted in a few things, in many shall they be well rewarded. Oh, I'm not done. Because God has tried them and found them worthy of himself. I wonder what kind of car Enoch's driving right now. <laughs> and everybody's waiting for Jesus to come back. And if this is such a great place, why hasn't he showed up yet? And every time I come out of the restroom, whether it's taking a shower or whatever, I wonder why didn't he plant himself in the 21st century? I would have. Must mean there's something else going on here that's above the sun. As gold in the furnace, he has proved them. As a victim of a holy cause, he has received them. And in time, there shall be respect had unto them. Woo! Come on. That's Jehovah's Witness teaching, I'll tell you what they teach. You ready? Yeah. They shall shine and shall run to and fro like sparks among the reeds. They shall judge nations and rule over people, and their Lord shall reign forever. That's what I told you, honey. Yeah. <laughs> see, see, your mother and honey are sisters, yeah. and honey's going to be a judge, see. She'll probably be over there with you. Because they both me and, <laughs> me and your daddy around so long. <laughs> God's been to train them to be judges. Woo! Oh, Can you hear this? I think this thing's bigger than me. Yes, it is. It's bigger than my life doctrine. Yes, sir. It's bigger than my life message. Come on, Come on. Oh, watch this. It's bigger than death. Yes, sir. Paul said it this way, not life, not death can separate me. Acts 31. Acts 31. I'm just sad that I had to lose my wife to understand this. And I pray and thank God every day that I took it upon myself without choice but that nobody else has to go through it. It's a living hell. That's true. Because you know in the resurrection, yep. I don't mean to be mean, but ain't mom and daddy anymore. Ain't Johnny and Susie. I said this to my mom this morning. Brother Varner always said this. God has no grandchildren. It's you and Him. My Lord. 
You're not going to know God through somebody else. You're going to know God for yourself. That's it. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Come on. You know that, Noah? Now, Papa, forget about Mom and Dad. Not Uncle. Are you hearing me? You're going to have to know them for yourself. And listen, it's lame if you think age has anything to do with it. When Josiah, you know what, I, I learned something, Josiah. I preached a message a few months ago about Josiah. I didn't know this. Everybody talks about Solomon being the wisest and the smartest and the richest. But you know, Josiah was the only king who had the most heart towards God, which was far better than anything uh, Solomon ever had. Come on. Well, Solomon didn't have a Mercedes either. <laughs> Whew, I got it to 1 o'clock, right? Isn't that what Doc said? They shall judge nations, they'll rule over people, and their Lord shall reign forever. Sounds like an overcomer to me. Sounds like an overcomer. The truth of the matter is, brother, God started tearing fences down on this whole path. Now, I'm not saying there aren't more to come down. I might be afraid of them, but I'm not saying there aren't more to come down. And really, seriously, sometime last year, I don't know how, I don't know when, but God began to release me from the sorrow. I couldn't change it. I settled everything. I seriously believe this. I really still do. That God says those that have gone on, He's going to blow a trumpet and they're going to get up. And I found out that God has an alarm clock reserved. And it's you and I who will just walk down the street and graves are going to begin to open. But they ain't coming back to play house. Are you with me? Did it, have I offended anybody? You know, that's one of the biggest problems I have. I always hurt people's feelings. I said this the last time I was here, right? God's looking for a few good men that can handle the truth. I don't always like what I hear. I always found out if it's sweet in my mouth, it ends up being bitter in my belly. That's right. But you got to eat it. You have to eat it. They that trust in him shall understand the truth, and they that are faithful in love shall rest in him. For grace and peace are to his elect. Now, if God chose me in him before the foundation of the world as his elect, like Paul said, as long as I walk towards Him, what goes on in this dimension is irrelevant to my calling. And my real assignment is to fulfill every word spoken when He said, let there be light. Can I read something? Turn with me. Judges. 
I, I have to read this verse. You know, in Corinthians it says there was a man made of the earth and there was a man made of the what? Heavenlies, right? Listen, if we bore the image of the earthly, God has declared that we shall. Now, I know some folks will put the word shall as a future tense in their mind, but I say shall starts the minute right now. It's a, it, it's a, 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 it is an ongoing thing. It, it, it is, hey, it was a moment ago. And listen, I, I had a past and I have a present and I have a future. I, I'm not doing away with any of that. But I'm telling you, coming into God is an ongoing thing. You know, it's funny that Manoah had a wife with no name, right? I did a little research, and even in Second Chronicles, or First Chronicles, chapter four, verse three, they actually believed that Hazel El Pony was Manoah's wife. And if you go into the internet, I, I was shocked. I don't study like this, but I happened to go and I ran, ran some rabbit trails with some true Jewish writings that his mom, Samson's that is, came out of the tribe of Judah. And they actually list her as the mother. Now, I do, I, I'm not going to preach that because it could be spec, speculative, but I'm going to tell you what. Her name means shade or shadow. And the Lord showed me that when the angel came to her, it was like when the angel came to Mary and he said, I will overshadow you. Because yeah. I'm going to produce something inside of you that's not ordinary. And when God came to the earth and he said it was void and without form and he wanted to produce something in the earth, yeah. he found something barren. I know for a fact that God is working in our lives, and what He's going to finish, I can't do. You got to find that rest, boy. Did you hear that? Yes, sir. Yep, yep, yep. Does that mean I can be lazy and sit around and do nothing? Well, I'm not even going to answer that question. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. had a baby named Samson whose name actually means son. Son, yes. Brilliance. Light. I'm going to repeat it. Even if Adam wouldn't have fallen, Christ was still coming. Adam, watch this. You remember when the queen of Sheba came and said, I, I, I got to go see all these lies I've heard about Solomon. And so he, she went and, and she got there and she said, my God, I've only heard half the story. Half ain't never been told. My God. Right? Yes, sir. Adam's only half the story. Yes. The other half, yes. Christ. Yes. Whether Adam fell or not, Christ. That's what makes a whole man. Watch this. They had, you know, they were getting, you know, the angel came and you know all that stuff. But look at here in verse 17. I better look and see how much time I got. Okay, here we go. And Manoah said unto the angel of the Lord, What is Thy name. Why did he want to know that? Watch this. That when your word comes to pass, we may know who to glorify. Did you hear what he really said? He said, when that word comes to pass, when that word is fulfilled in you and I, we will be the glory of the Lord. That baby hadn't been born yet. But he knew that when that word people are waiting for angels. I have something to tell you about angels. When Cornelius 
had an angel come visit him? Yeah. Why didn't he tell him everything? Because it wasn't for an angel. He told, the angel told Cornelius, you go down and get Peter, I need a man. At no time did he ever say to any angel, sit at my right hand. No, sir. At no time did he ever say, I'm going to put the fullness of the Christ in an angel. You know, Job said this. I'm serious. I, you know, you, you, might, you might think I'm crazy, and, and I am. But I'm going to tell you what. Job said, I need your word more than my necessary food. I've ate good, I've ate bad, but we've eaten. But none of it, none of it will give me life. No. He said, your fathers all ate manna in the desert, and they are all dead. But I'm the true bread. Just like Samson, he came down to destroy the flesh. Get the honey in the line. Woo, good God of my God's word will be fulfilled. When Balaam and Balak had their little dialogue, he said, listen, God is not a man. That's our first problem right there. God is not a man. Got to get a hold of that. But in John chapter 1, it said that one that wasn't a man became flesh. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This is deep. Yes, deep. For some folks. But I'm going to help him. Go to swim in it. Because you know why? If he made me understand, he made me understand for a reason. Yeah. And that was to make sure someone else could understand. That's right. I, I'm serious. Go Brother ahead. Danny Milton says this to me all the time. You tell me, why do we know the things that we know? Because God in his sovereignty said, I need a first fruit. Yep. I need someone who's willing to pay the price. You can't do it if you don't have the vision. The dream. I hope I didn't mess anybody up. I'm really sorry that I cried. I don't like to make people cry. I may never forget her. But you know what? She's in his hands. But you know what? So am I. <laughs> David Huskins stood right here and he prophesied to me. He says, you may not believe this, but she's with you. I said, you're out of your mind. Because I was only looking under <coughs> the sun. It's an incorruptible seed that cannot die. And we have it. We have it. We have it, brother. I don't have to go look for it. No. I don't. I have it. You know the funny thing is? Only thing I had to do, how simple is this? I only had to repent and believe. That's it. He didn't ask me to nail on a cross. No. Nope. No. Just had to believe. I didn't get to all my notes. You did good. I can't stop. I'm having a hard time stopping. Because as great as this message was, at least I think so, there's more. There's something inside of me that's just clamoring 
for more. It's outside of me. See, I do not believe in the duality of nature. If you've been circumcised in baptism. But I will tell you this. The problem is double-mindedness. Did you say that thing that wrapped around was called a kutsu? Kutsu vine. Kutsu vine. Kutsu. Kutsu. He who loses his suke. Yeah. That's it. That old girl named Sue. Yeah. Always trying to cut things off. I guess I'm done. That's the way I am. No fanfare for me. <laughs> no, 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 no reason to wear people out. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, let's stand. Come on, Dad. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. You know, can you just sit down for a minute? I, I, I'm not trying to, I'm, I'm not going to preach. But, but last night the Lord spoke to me to share something. I didn't know whether I was going to share it this morning or, or um, tonight. But I think I'll share it now. It's just a little story. Well, Justin said to us last night that we need to push back the fence. And we need to open ourselves up. And I heard during the dance this morning that uh, if we would just release ourselves, God would bring us into more reality. It's, it's this resistance we, we always have, these mindsets that we have. And... and uh, Sometimes God puts us through some tough places to, to bring us in to show us the greatness of who he is. God knows how to take care of his own. I'm convinced what he preached, the seed never dies. Um, I'm, I'm convinced that in this book is nothing but truth. It's full of truth. We just haven't comprehended it all. We haven't understood it all. We and the reason is because we've had mindsets. It's how we brought up how we, all this. We're going to tell a little story. Is it all right? I don't know if this is a possibility. Some of you other people might know. But uh, oh, back about 25 or so years ago, when, um, when we first came here, I, I met a man from over in the Worcester area. And um, he'd come out of the... Uh, the old ladder rain movement. And he was a good old guy. And he was always trying to plug me into folks I'd never heard of or anything like that. And so he handed me this tape one day and it blew me out of my mind. And God will put you into areas that'll just blow you out of my change to change your outlook, to change your your thought life. And and um Brother Doc is read out of Ephesians, and you read out of Ephesians, and you got to stay out of my Ephesians. That's one of my favorite books. But uh, anyway, we the time came when Sister Fran and I actually met this guy face to face down in Granby, Connecticut. We're going to tell you this story. The guy was out of, uh, at the time, he was out of Seattle area. Of Washington and his name was Dave Davies but when he was young did you know him Randy did you know Dave Davies Randy knew him but when he was young he rode with the Oakland chapter of the Hells Angels and what his job was as an Oakland chapter of the Hells Angels 
was to deal with the problems when they had them with other motorcycle gangs. And there were seven of them, and they rode up into Seattle area. Actually, it was in Tacoma. And they rode up into Tacoma, and their job was up in Tacoma was to get rid of some of these guys. And they killed three guys. They shot three guys from this other chapter up in Tacoma. Dave Davies and his partners got caught. They got put in prison. And he had three life sentences. And he was in prison. And while he was in prison, he got born again. And he was in this group that was kind of like a evangelical kind of group, you know, that he got born again in this group. And shortly thereafter, after he, uh, I don't know how long it was, shortly thereafter, there was a charismatic group that came, or a Pentecostal group that come in. And Dave got the baptism of the Holy Ghost. One week after he got the baptism of the Holy Ghost, he got accused of doing something that he didn't do, and they put him in the hole. And he was down in the hole. And he was down there for about a month, and he was griping and complaining. Do you, you ever gripe and complain about your situation? And he said, I didn't do this. You know how it is. I didn't do this. I had no reason to be Joseph. I had no reason to be in this prison. I didn't do this. He's down in this hole, fresh with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And while he's down in the hole, he had a vision. When he had his vision, God was asking, he took him back to before time was, before there was anything, before God had made the earth, and before God had made anything, and before he said, let there be. And God began to declare dates and said, I need this done, and this done, and this done, and this done, and this done. And Dave Davies said, out of the midst of nowhere, I heard my voice answer and say, I will go. Within six months, he was out of prison, a free man. The charges were lifted. And he was out declaring the gospel. I just want you to know, this didn't begin when you popped out of mama's belly. This began in God. And it's going to end in God. Jesus said I'm the alpha. And I am the omega. What God has purposed. Is already in him. All God is ever asking us to do is get in line with his choosing. The road may not be Dale's road. The road may not be Justin's road. But God's got a path. God's got a path for every one of us. And all he's asking us to do is to walk that path. Job says there's a path, there's a way. He said the vulture hasn't found it. Death hasn't walked on it. There is a way. And if we come to the realization and just come to the agreement that God, before anything was, there is you. That's what you were saying, son.
It's that which is above the sun. It's brighter than the noonday. That's, that's, that's what it says. He said, I'm going to have a people that shine brighter than the noonday. That's above the sun. That's the reality of what Paul saw on that road. Amen? Amen. Amen. Appreciate that. I know how hard that was. I know. I know. I think I know. Uh, now you can stand back up. I know our friends from New Hampshire. They they uh, they 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 want to get home, and I, and I want to feed them. So I would like to feed them. So. So if everything's ready in there for us, let's go. Okay. <laughs>